As long as man has looked up at the heavens, he's dreamt of travelling to the stars. In the 2nd century AD, an ancient Mesopotamian scribe wrote about a ship blown to the moon by a storm. But according to legend, in the 1500s it was a Chinese astrologer, Wan Hu, who became the first person to try to reach the moon using rockets. Travelling in a chair powered by gunpowder. Once the smoke cleared, he was nowhere to be seen. Whether he made it into space remains a mystery. It would take the genius of American engineer Robert H. Goddard in the early 20th century to turn the seemingly impossible dream of a rocket powerful enough to leave the Earth's atmosphere into a reality. Space historian Amy Shearer Title is joining the Albuquerque Rocket Society in Roswell, New Mexico. As they look to recreate one of Goddard's landmark engineering feats. This rocket is a replica of the A5 built by rocket pioneer Robert Goddard in 1935. And it was in this desert landscape, away from populated areas, that Goddard was first able to fire his rockets to really show how powerful they were. Fascinated by space travel as a child, in 1915, he'd launched his first rocket. But the gunpowder that fueled his early prototypes was an extremely inefficient means of propulsion. He knew that to ultimately leave the pull of the Earth's gravity, he would need a far more powerful fuel source. And so he turned to liquid propulsion, a mix of gasoline and liquid oxygen that would burn with a hotter reaction and create a more powerful rocket. Burning gasoline and liquid oxygen together in a combustion chamber created a high-pressure, high-velocity stream of hot gas. Passing it up through two pipes and down a nozzle accelerated the flow of the gas more, producing thrust to propel the rocket upward. The higher the temperature, the greater the thrust. And this is actually a replica of his 1926 rocket that he used as a proof of concept demonstration of the power of liquid propulsion. He named it Nell and it flew 41 feet in just two seconds before it crashed. It was a small but incredibly significant flight. Goddard had created the blueprint for all modern rockets. In 1920, he published a paper claiming his designs could be used to send payloads to the moon. Not everyone agreed. Called absurd by the New York Times, his ideas flew in the face of the accepted scientific views. Scientists believe that because there's no air in space, there would be nothing for a rocket to push against so it wouldn't be able to fly. But Goddard had other ideas. Thanks to one of the most basic laws of physics, written by Sir Isaac Newton in 1686. It stated that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Unlike his contemporaries, Goddard believed this theory would apply in the vacuum of space. So here's Newton's third law of motion in action. Imagine the skateboard is the rocket and the medicine ball is the hot exhaust gases escaping from that rocket. As I throw it forward, the force of me throwing the medicine ball will propel me backwards with the same force in the opposite direction. So here we go. That's Newton's third law in action. Inspired to push the boundaries, during a 15-year period, Goddard launched 34 liquid-fueled rockets. Ultimately reaching altitudes as high as two and a half kilometers and speeds approaching 1,200 kilometers an hour. And today, having been faithfully replicated, one of his engineering masterpieces, the A5 rocket, is set to launch in the New Mexican desert. So this is really cool. This is like going back in time. This is it. Five, four, three, two, one. That's amazing! Oh. This is really incredible. 
You can just imagine Robert Goddard and his team being out here doing this exact same thing 80 years ago. Robert Goddard truly changed the face of rocket design and made the seemingly impossible possible. He researched, developed, and understood the basic fundamental principles of modern spaceflight and developed the rockets to make it happen. Without Goddard's contribution, human spaceflight would still be just a dream.